In today's challenge, we're once again going through the painful experience that is region-locked Skyrim. Except, to make things a bit different than the last two times where we locked ourselves inside the cities of Whiterun and Solitude, we'll be out in the open world, both for my own sanity and to change up a formula that I'm genuinely terrified of running out of ideas for. Agent Sam returns once again with the goal of walking a circle around Skyrim's entire map while confined between the two outer edges of Skyrim's main roads, taking in the scenes, meeting any interesting people, and living off of whatever he's able to find in an effort to answer the question question, can you play Skyrim without leaving the road? I pulled the YouTube community the other week about where we should take this series next. To my surprise, Raven Rock won in an absolute blowout. I really have no clue how you guys let that happen. However, a comment in this thread caught my eye suggesting this exact challenge, so congratulations to the underdog write-in candidate, William. In terms of rules and limitations for this challenge, difficulty in game has been set to expert and all travel must be done on Skyrim's main roads. That means no fast travel and no interiors. Dirt paths are typically off limits, but we made up the rules as we went along, so if a road does appear on the map, it's fair game. Also, no, we didn't do this with survival on because it's not possible to sleep in game without leaving the road, and I'm saving that for the next one. Dude, why wouldn't you make a strict set of rules before going into this? Because it's my channel and I can do whatever the fuck. Your path to becoming an agoraphobic nomad starts like a normal playthrough. Create a character and run through the intro, because by the time you finish, you'll be set onto the endless winding path that this entire journey takes place on. Now one thing you can do to best prepare for your journey is use your allies as practice targets. They understand that your journey is more important than their lives, so they're more than willing to accommodate your XP needs. What are you doing? Just, hey, it'll all make sense later. What's the matter with you? Ooh, don't forget to steal archery XP too, that's gonna be important later. No way, I already got a disease? One last thing I forgot to mention. So we made a spell mod a few months back that gives the player every disease in the entire game for science, you know? Well, having this modded spell installed actually skyrockets the player's chance at catching disease. So I'm gonna operate the rest of this tutorial under the assumption that you too are looking to travel the roads of Skyrim role-playing a walking bag of SARS. Now that you're finally on the road, it's time to pick a standing stone, no complaining, it's part of the road, I don't wanna hear it, and begin your journey. Oh, uh, really? 25% less effective with me? Great. Great. <laughs> awesome. A dragon. I saw a dragon. Take a look. Yes, we can. We can get him to come to the road and trade. We're going alone. This is a lone wanderer's journey. That's all the damage I can do? This bow sucks. I feel like this is the most iconic road in gaming. Am I wrong in saying that? Rainbow Road? That's a racing game though. Nobody actually plays racing games. <laughs> oh, butterflies. We can still murder bugs. If he's out of bounds, I can't loot him. Joke's on you, Wolf. You can't disease me. I've already tested positive for every venereal disease in the book. Do you have arrows on you, ma'am? You didn't answer my question. But we have 14 shots left. That's pretty good. Actually, it's pretty terrible. And unless you plan on throwing harsh language at people, you're going to need to stock up on arrows fast. Wait a minute. He's going to shoot his arrows at me. No, 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 come back. I got 50 arrows. That's plenty, I'm moving on. Your next goal is to reach Riften in order to work your way up the map north. And while I can't describe every encounter you'll run into, it'll be different for everyone. One of the most important skills a nomad can have is the uncanny ability to- Imperial business, be on your way. Give it to me, three in a row. Woo! I fear ever bringing children into this world because they may grow up one day to be a sneak archer build. <sighs> what do you guys think? Can we interact with this poor guy? I mean, look, he needs our help. But I'm sorry, man, you're not on the road. I don't know what I can do. I'm sure you're worth valuable archery XP. Don't you walk away from me. Yeah, come onto my road. I missed. I, I, I missed twice. How do I miss the execution? Don't bother me, peasant. I got an idea. We're gonna let his bodyguard and friend walk very, very far away. We're gonna lock him in conversation here. You okay, wolf? I know there's a bear down there. Can we outrun the bear? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Get out of the way, lead block, block for me. He called us a peasant on my road. In my territory. Your name looks like a Latin vocabulary term. Who the fuck? No, 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 no. 
Guard, 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 guard! What's a milk drinker like you doing out here? I've got a crazy bounty on my head. If you knew the crimes that I'd committed... You shouldn't leave weapons laying around. Someone could get hurt. Have I made myself clear? Yeah, you have, but I really don't give a shit. <laughs> you wouldn't want to screw with me, man. All right? What are you gonna do? Cry? You pay my fine, and you walk A away. fine? I'm getting fined? It's a, what? 50 gold? No, I'm not paying this guy a bribe. I'll have to charge you with disturbing the Yar's peace. No, I'm gonna litter right in front of your face. Put some real knocks in the ozone layer. I don't have to take that from you. Oh shit, he loves the ozone layer. Run! He's a fighter. Where's your guard? Gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up. Oh my god, oh my god, he's dodging my arrows. I gotta execute this guy quick. How do I miss again? I gotta kill Ken! Are you feeling sick? Yes, incredibly. Believe it. Oh well. Must have run off. <laughs> what? I think he was on my side. I need to talk to you. Who are you? You're my hero. Need something? Oh no. Guys, I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> hold on. I can explain everything. Your friend, uh... Hey, friend. It's good to see another merry soul enjoying this fine day. Oh, God. We gotta go hide the body quick. I don't want them to find their friend. <laughs> we gotta get him out of the road. Uh, we gotta stuff him somewhere. Oh, shit. Uh, just, uh, uh, we'll put him... Uh... I can explain. I get it. Making friends is really hard. Making enemies is way easier, way easier, and sometimes more fun. But a good traveler knows that there's strength in numbers, and maybe eventually you'll find a loyal group. They're back! <laughs> They're finally back. It's good to see another merry soul enjoying this fine day. It's good to see another merry soul patch. Running into these guys is great because they're so wasted they don't remember that I'm the one that murdered their friend right in front of them. In fact, they already had his replacement lined up, so I don't think they mind. Unfortunately, unlike their bender, all good things must come to an end. You're gonna let me get punched in the face. You're just gonna watch this happen? Never should have. Wait, what? You win, I submit. Why do they hit why do they hate their friend? Why would you kill your friend? <laughs> Wait, don't just go right walk up into a spider's oh god, one down. Where are you going? Where where are you go what? You can't just leave me, man. After all we've been through. Dealing with a tough breakup can be hard, especially when you don't even get a text or a call. They just walk away like you don't even exist. But look at you, look at how far you've come. By now you should easily be crossing Windhelm, which is where I found the Khajiit traders. Sold some junk, bought a backpack, stocked up on any useful potions and poisons I could, and with all these new shiny toys, I was easily able to cope with losing three of my friends in tragic fashion. One thing I wanted to do on this run was learn a spell, and the only place I know of to do that without technically leaving paved road is the college of Winterhold, so onward through the mountains. At any point in your run, you can come across some Vigilance of Stendar, although right around here is where I ran into a few for the first time. You're bloated with disease. Not only will they cure your walking biolab syndrome, but they're even nice enough to drop a few cure disease potions after you. Now, since I'm a Bethesda shill and Todd Howard owns my life savings, I'm playing on the Anniversary Edition, which includes a Creation Club quest called Saints and Seducers. You can find a camp of these cosplayers on the way to Winterhold, and while they're certainly tough to fight, the loot they have is so worth it. I'm gonna take this time here to teach you all a lesson in- I haven't gone too in depth with my combat strategy here because I think with this challenge it's a bit harder than the previous two videos to tell you guys exactly how to go about things. Everyone has their own favorite combat style, but I believe I've developed several illegal defense techniques that Bethesda doesn't want you to know that will keep you alive on the road. Tactic number one, the shoot and scoot. Combat on the road is a mind game, and nothing says feckless coward like shooting an enemy to get their attention and then running away. Although for this challenge, seeing as we need our enemies in the road in order to actually loot them, the shoot and scoot is a fantastic way to ensure that you don't leave your arbitrary barriers. Tactic number two is the turtle. The turtle is one of my favorite techniques because it combines the feckless cowardice of the shoot and scoot with the laziness of a recliner on wheels. This is combat on autopilot. Now this method does require that you play as a dark elf, but by activating your ancestor wrath ability and setting everything that touches you on fire, you can turtle up and watch your opponents take themselves out. Tactic number three is the drive-by. The drive-by is my favorite illegal combat technique in Skyrim because let's be honest, how many of you have been able to withstand the jankiness of Skyrim's horse combat for longer than five minutes? Give it some time though and you'll be raining mobile death on your enemies as you quickly make progress westward towards solitude. Oh my god, I missed. I'm the worst drive-by assassin ever. Stop right there. 
right there. <laughs> this guy really wants to fight me and he doesn't even have a horse. What an idiot. Remember how I mentioned Winterhold earlier? Well, we're skipping it, because Winterhold sucks. You're now at Solitude, and there's still a fair amount of journey left, so it's time we discuss some emergency situations and remedies that you can employ to keep your hypothetical raft of adventure afloat. Since the law in Skyrim claims your horse is stolen, it might wander away from you. However, there's a perfectly practical way to get your horse back on your team. And then I surrender. Oh no, I can't surrender! Stop! No, I love you! Can't we just pretend that my horse and I are actually just good enough friends to where it follows me? Oh, really? Is this how our relationship ends? Never mind, never mind. I never put the horse in any extreme danger. Only some danger. Is this really necessary? Do we have to keep doing this? Can you please just forgive me? Turning around, initiating horse attack. Charge. Rotate. Flanking target. You're just a distraction at this point. I'm sorry, everybody. Close your eyes if you don't like horse violence. I'm sorry. Go. Run. Run. Be free. We're finally the good guy. You know, it's about time. I finally have some karma on this run. What the fuck? Looks like karma on the road has caught up to you. The last time you saved was 45 minutes ago, and you're now two and a half seconds from turning into cat food. Well, seeing as this is an educational video, the best course of action to escape a situation like this is to quickly panic and then hit every button on your keyboard or controller at once. Ah! Oh man, I just fucked that all up. I'm just gonna go shield sword, see what I can do. I'm dead. I'm dead. Can I get this block in? Get some clearance. Sword. Not sure what I just did. What the fuck? Did, why did it take off the sword? Mother f For the first time in this channel's history, I need to come clean and apologize to everyone. For I have made a severe lapse in judgment. Is what I would be saying if I felt bad at all for Console Command killing my way out of this sticky situation. Skyrim is supposed to be fun, and it's my channel, I make the rules, so cheat if you have to. However, if you do cheat on this challenge, penance must be paid via naked shame walk. Why do I end up naked in all of these challenges? At some point or another, I always end up naked. I wish for this challenge I had some grand end goal or final fireworks of ridiculousness like I have in previous iterations, but to be honest with all you guys, nothing interesting really happened between here and circling all the way back around the map and reaching Riften, so I'm gonna take this time to tell everyone who watches the channel, thank you. Uh, the, the last month has been an absolute dream come true. I know it might sound silly to some people. You look at a channel and you go, you only had, you know, 30,000 subscribers. Um, it, it really does mean the absolute world to me that so many of you guys have left so many kind comments and come over to the live stream and watched, you know, these challenges sort of unfold over the six to eight to 12 hours sometimes it takes to record them. And you know, it just is so hard to describe how heartfelt and thankful I feel for all of the support that you guys have shown the channel recently. For 18 months, you know, I was creating videos on YouTube and really going nowhere with it, but continuing to do it and continuing to try and get better at it because I fucking love this. I fucking love doing it. I love telling stupid jokes. I love writing scripts. I love, you know, taking a dumb experience that we have in some of the best games ever made that I grew up with and, and trying to tell a story on YouTube. It's been a pretty rough year for my family and having this to sort of fall back on as a positive experience for myself has been incredible. And I can't thank you enough. Now f off and go watch another one of my videos. <laughs> <laughs>